I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah? I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right as representing for Omar. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over here. Come subscribe, repost and share. Yeah, share. If me not sure, that me, me not say it. No who score, that me, me not say it. Never know no game play, that me, me not say it. If me never seen a game, me not know who play. For your sports news, better come over your son. For your soccer news, then come over your son. If you don't love sports, still come over your for the day, don't you want to love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or no Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Trick Nick Dirt Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Made up of 18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. All right. Good evening. Welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manning's Man, and it is always a pleasure being with you it is a good day and we always say we rejoice and we are glad in it it is good friday it's a major holiday here in jamaica and the streets of saint anne they are congested i mean there's party here parties here party everywhere there's party on the ocean party on the sand party on the streets i mean party in the sky i mean it's just party 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 i am wondering where the people get all this money from and then tuesday morning you hear everyone crying we have no money how the kids are going to go to school my advice to you is to party less and pay more attention to the little ones that you have but have some fun but save some of the money and if you don't know where to save it give it to me and i'll keep it for you as long as you want but when you can't find me don't come searching i'm telling you all right but uh Today is, a, is such a special, special day. I mean, that the person who kind of inspired me to actually start this channel, I mean, I don't even know how this happened except that God is so good. And I, I feel so privileged and honored to have him. I know many of you across Jamaica have been asking to talk with him, to meet him. Even the Manchester United fans, they don't ask when United stand coming to Jamaica. They ask when is Robbie coming to Jamaica, right? Um, expression, like he has Jamaican connection, but you know, like, you know what we call him? We call him X because everything that Tottenham goes after, it's a big fat X, right? So we don't call him expression. We just call him X. We don't ask about X coming to Jamaica, right? We ask about Robbie coming to Jamaica because he is the man. So he's here today and we're so, so happy to have him. And he's going to just, uh, just be a blessing to us and share us some thoughts. But remember, hit the like button, subscribe, and share as we welcome and introduce uh, our guest, Mr. Robbie Lyle. All right. How you doing? Welcome. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. So Big good intro, man. I like that intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, tell that one ex, right? That he needs to change his name, right? He, he has to put tick pressure or check pressure <laughs> because that ex thing is, is the reason why Tottenham ain't winning a thing. Like, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> No, I know he's going to say something, but I mean, so many good, good things happening with AFTV. But 
um, just tell us a little bit about you because many of us know that you have some Jamaican connection. We met Laurie. Laurie came on when we were talking to Cecil. And, and, and so much of your content has a Caribbean feel, uh, an African feel to it. It, it. it makes us feel proud mm. just as black people. I mean, oh, that's good. everywhere. That's good. Yeah. So talk to us about it. What inspired you and how did this all come about? Yeah, we'll just go go into the Jamaican connections. Um, my mom and dad, um, they're both passed now, but they're from Jamaica. Um, my mom was from Old Arbor. Um, and my dad, my dad was born in Kingston at Maxfield Avenue. Oh. Right? <laughs> That's where he was born. Um, and then he he was also lived in Old Arbor as well. So I've got, you know, I still um have a lot of family in Jamaica. I still talk to my family down in Jamaica, and I, I'm longing to come. I know I get asked this all the time. I was I was over in uh, Florida. Um, no, I was over in uh, Miami recently. And I was getting cussed off by some Jamaicans there accusing me of going to Africa before <laughs> coming to Jamaica. <laughs> so I said to them, I said, listen, man, we're coming, man. We're coming. We're soon coming. I mean, I, um, I really do want to come to Jamaica and, and, and do something. You know what I mean? So, um, the passion of the fans down there is unbelievable. And I just love the country. So I haven't been for a long time. I've just been so busy. I just haven't been able to get down there. But I'm coming. I, I'm going to definitely make it, you know, my priority to get over there this year. So um, really looking forward to that. And, you know, um, the inspiration to start the channel, just, you know, I'm a lifelong Arsenal fan and um, just wanted to start a channel that could give ordinary fans wherever you are in the UK and around the world a chance to have your say on on the football club and it's just over the years it's grown and grown and grown until it's where we are now you know so um it's fantastic that I can be even doing stuff like this and speaking to you and speaking to people down there in Jamaica you know it's really nice um but yeah I, 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 I'm looking forward to coming to Jamaica very soon all right, so let me say a couple of things. One, that trip to, I think though, the trip to Ghana, though we'd have preferred you come into Jamaica, there's a connection because a lot of the slaves that ended up in Jamaica actually came through that gate, gate of no return. Yeah. So that yeah. whole, you know, like for me, that whole story was just, it, it, it was such a good story. Yeah. Just even giving us a picture of that so we can at least have some sort of connection to where all of this kind of started for us out here in the Western world. Honestly, it was really moving for me um, to go to the Cape Coast and um, see, you know, that where they used to transport the slaves from Africa. Because I remember when I was growing up, my dad always used to say to us, he goes, you're not English, you're not <laughs> Jamaican. So we used to be like, we used to go, if we're not English and we're not Jamaican, who are we then? He goes, you're African. He goes, every black person in this world is from Africa, right? So he used to go, oh, how come? And then he explained it. He said, listen, we were, you know, from when we were little kids, he said, all black people were from Africa, were taken from Africa as slaves, went to Jamaica, America, Brazil, wherever, you know what I mean? They all came from Africa. Yeah. And so to go there and see it for myself, see where they used to take the slaves, the way they used to treat them, the way um, it was so systematic, you know, and they brought all the slaves uh, across the, the waters, the ones that survived that trip that was, ended up in places like Jamaica. You know, that's where, you know, we've descended from those slaves. So it was incredibly moving. And I'll tell you what, we've we uh, we've done that video, but we've actually got a longer version to it, which is about an hour long, um, which we're going to release when Black History Month comes um in the UK, that's going to be around about November. Oh, we're going to release... it, oh because yeah, Black History Month here is in February. Okay, okay, yeah, it's a bit different in the UK, it's in, in like in November, but we're going to release that full version. And I'll tell you, it's very, very moving. But you know, standing up on that fort, looking out across the sea, I just, just like, I, I was nearly in tears, you know, to, to, um, to see, um, you know, what happened with the slaves. But, yeah, going to Ghana was a fantastic experience. Um, the, the Ghanaian people were unbelievable. And you can see, when you're, when you're going around Ghana, you can see the connection between, say, for instance, the Ghanaian people and the Jamaican people. They look alike. They, they, there's a lot of 
e even the food that they eat. There's a lot of food yeah. that they eat that you can see. There's the slaves took that food to Jamaica, say for instance, and then maybe the, the, there's little sort of um, differences between the food agree. because they didn't have the ingredients. But you can see the similarities with lots and lots of food that they eat in Ghana. In, in Ghana. So, um, no, it was an incredible experience. It really was. And um, I loved every minute of being in Ghana. I mean, it must be, though, also a tremendous burden on you. Because, I mean, when you begin to do stuff like this, then so many people look up to you. You are a source of inspiration, not just um, in London, but I guess the people in Ghana, the people in Nigeria, people mm. across the Caribbean, in the state. I mean... I mean, how does that now just keep you motivated to keep on excelling? Like, like every 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 month, just the production of at AFTV, it mm. gets better. The the quality, the content that is provided. How you know how just being a black person and having that experience challenges you to keep on improving, keep on growing, and keep on yeah. spreading the brand as an African uh, uh, English American. Uh, um, our English African or African mm. uh, in, in the UK that is dominated by um, what was a mainstream media that mm. are predominantly Caucasian. Yeah, well, first of all, it's not a burden. I don't feel it as a burden at all. I, I love what I do. I enjoy what I do. And I'm just a person that I'm always trying to improve. You see, you, if you speak to anybody who knows me, they will tell you that's just how I am. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I won't be jumping up and down about the the thing that we've done, the successful, for too long. I'll be looking at what can we do next. So that's just inbuilt in me, and I've always been like that. So um, I don't see it as a burden at all. I just want to I just wanna improve. Um, I just want to um, show people that, you know, um, you know, we can make great content. You know, um, I've really put a lot of work into it. I've got like, you know, now built four studios here in the UK um, that we've got, that we film out of. We've got the AFTV studio, we've got the DR Sports studio, F1 studio, and another studio, um, all where we are based in uh, North London. And for me, it's just about trying to, a bit like what, a bit like football, isn't it? You want to you wanna improve every day. You want to stay up the top. You want to be... As, as good as you can be. You want to have a good team. So I, I just have the same, I follow all those same analogies and I just want us to be good at what we do. And then, as I said, I just enjoy what I do. I mean, you know, it's, it's not hard work to, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's not hard work to go to Ghana and do, or Nigeria or America or wherever to do filming. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an absolute privilege. And um, we, you know, I've been blessed really, you know, um, to, to be able to be doing these things. So it's fantastic for me. And, you know, every time I meet people and they say to me, oh, Robbie, you're an inspiration. And, you know, I mean, I started my channel because of you. I started doing content because of you. Or, you know, it's just really, it's, I, I find that a really, really nice thing. Um, it's not something, you know, when you set out and you're building your channel and you're building your business, you're not really looking, that's not really one of your priorities. It's sort of something that's sort of come along later on and you've been like, wow, that's really nice that, you know, all these things, you know, people are complimenting you in that way. Um, and you just want to keep working hard and then they'll keep complimenting you. Of course, you get criticism as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but you have to deal with, you have to deal with both of them equally, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? It's funny because uh, if you notice, we have the same mic and I picked up that from AFTV, right? Oh, nice. Um, Good I'll, yes, I'm telling you. So, and also the um, the disclaimer you have, right? I kind of looked at it because I spent a lot of time looking at the channel to kind of mm. decide how, you know, I would coin mine and, and shape it and stuff. So, like I said, there's a lot. And there are other persons right now watching who said it, AFTV is their inspiration to start in their whole channel. So That's continue nice. to, yeah, continue to do that. But I know you also went through a very rough patch because I, I was there um, watching during the time when the latter years of Arsene Wenger, when the team wasn't doing so well and most people felt like, like y y your channel existed to benefit um, from Arsenal being poor. And mm -hmm. if Arsenal were performing well, then AFTV would would possibly die. 
what has happened is that he have grown exponentially <laughs> when the team is doing good. Yeah. I mean, how was that time? To the, I mean, the latter stages of Arsene Wenger, um, part of Unai Emery as well. It was a very difficult time in terms of the criticism, like you said, from mainstream media and people around Arsenal about AFTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got um, criticised. There were some people. I, I remember, like, sometimes I go to games and there'd be one set of people who come up to me and criticise me for having a go at Arsene, well, not me personally, but for allowing people on the channel to have a go at Arsene Wenger. And then there'd be another set of people who come along and say, well, no, you're too soft, right? <laughs> you must be working for the club because you're not saying enough on it. You know, so I started to realise from pretty, pretty a long time ago that, um, you know, criticism is one of the things that goes with the territory. Unfortunately, you know what I mean? Um, you get criticised sometimes for things you haven't done. You get people um, attacking you um, when you haven't really, you know, for no reason at all. We still get it now. We still, you know, but I, I've just realised over time that um, it goes with the territory. The bigger you get, the more people are going to criticise this and criticise that. I mean, yeah, I remember... We had the criticism from even like Gary Neville and things like that. But then now they're doing stuff with fans. <laughs> you know, I mean, they've even, you know I, I, I've seen, I've seen like loads of the, I mean, I was at these uh, sports journalism awards last, well, Monday gone here in the UK. And, you know, you see now there's been a big change in, in people's attitudes towards us. Um, you know, a lot of the mainstream media, are now looking at what we do and saying that you know we we have to do stuff like that as well or we'll we, we, we're not going to get very far and, uh, and and a couple of weeks ago i was uh speaking to the bbc to their staff who do all of their shows on five live match of the day all of that they invited me to come and speak about how you know um i built AFTV and how we engage with fans so it shows that you know um We've we've proved that what we're doing is nothing. Is not we, we're not just here trying to be a hype, you know, just work off a hype. We're here day in day out making content, speaking to fans, and making good content. And like you said, there used to be people who used to say that you know the channel was only big because you know Arsenal was going through a tough time. Well, the, the last couple of seasons we've been going through our best period for a very long time. All of a sudden, those people who were saying that have just disappeared. You can't see them no more. No one say, you know, what I mean, you don't hear them no more. They're not saying nothing again. You know, what I mean, I just laugh. So when yeah. you're doing something, when you're doing something and it gets big, it's gonna come. You're gonna get some of this. Unfortunately, you get people criticizing you. You're gonna, you have to, you have to um, just continue doing your thing and make sure you do it well. And if you've got faith in what you're doing, it's going to be all right. Yeah, awesome. And the, the channel is very diverse, right? You have like a tie that thinks like every time Arsenal loses, it's a referee fault. Kalichi <laughs> always have a song and a dance. You have like the Graham and and the uh, and, and James. You have the Cecil, you have the females. I mean, you have Turkish. Uh, I mean, well, he, he's getting a little bit more happy and believing a whole lot more. Zoe had to stop you recently and say, Robbie, let's, let's, let's hold on. Let's hold on <laughs> with all of this. You don't want to be clipped again. So, I mean, <laughs> even, even the, 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 the channel is it, so diverse. Mm. Um, you know, Julian and, um, you know, we, we're thinking about going back to Claude and troops and, mm. and, and just so many different personalities that have come together. Yardman, I mean, you know, <laughs> Jamaican, like listening to Yardman doing his interview, White Yardy as well. So there, there's such diversity. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just an awesome mix of, of people from almost, it, it appears from here, uh, from every sector of life and community mm. and backgrounds and and all of that you know um yeah. coming together over the years it is just a beautiful picture that's exactly what football is though isn't it football is such a diverse um sport you know what i mean you're going to a football ground and there's people there of all religions all colors um male female they're all there supporting with a common interest they're supporting their team 
And I think that I'm very proud that we reflect that. You know what I mean? That you, you know, you you'll see. You know, I I I feel before we came along, it was the, that diversity wasn't shown a lot. It was almost as if some um, TV companies and radio companies, the, in their head, they had what they thought was, you know, what a football fan looked and sounded like. But that's not what a football fan looks and sounds like. They're, football fans are all different. You've got football fans in Jamaica. You've got football fans in England, Russia. Like, I, I've been all around the world and, and met football fans from, from every country. So um, I'm glad that we show that diversity because football is a very diverse sport, very, very diverse sport that can really bring people together um, under that one banner of supporting their football club. And um, that's what we've uh, we've really nailed that on um, AFTV. And that's because basically with me, my, my whole policy is if you're an Arsenal fan and you're passionate about the club and you've got something you want to say, come and say it on AFTV. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your color is. I don't care what you know, male fit. Just come and have your say. Simple. That's yeah. how it should be in life. Yeah, we'd ask you some of the favorite comments from the people. I figure you'll get them all right. Like, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that was Claude. By the way, Claude, um, rest <laughs> in peace of Claude. He's actually, uh, he actually he passed away. Yeah, also, I think it's three years ago today, you know, and that was a real oh. sad loss because, um, you know, he was a he was a great character. He's one of the first people to ever come on AFTV when I first started doing the interviews. I remember the, when I interviewed him, I was walking around the stadium trying to find fans to come on and he came on and he he was brilliant, you know, and um, it was really sad when he passed away. Um, but his memory lives on. We do we do a football tournament in his name every year. Um, which we then used to raise money for um, a charity that's supported by his family. So his memory lives on. And um, he, I think he'd be loving what he's seeing from Arsenal this season. You know, the fact that we're challenging again to, to, to try and win this league. And what Ty says, we must not forget, it's been raining. <laughs> <laughs> that's the classic <laughs> <laughs> so but it, what is so awesome but uh you have been also talking to Kibo so Kibo has jumped on he's also an Arsenal fan I know he worked doing? yeah with with Claude and oh, sorry with with Claudine and Cecil when they were here in Jamaica Charlene yeah, yeah. Um, Charlene yeah yeah yeah. yeah, so good good evening, Sir Robbie. It's nice good to have evening. you here. It's been a while, but nevertheless, it's a good place to be, you know. And I hope hopefully we can have you again when we win the league, you know. This, <laughs> this summer. Hopefully. I don't know, we have the Copa America as well. So you could come and celebrate that, you know, at the Copa America if you're not coming to Jamaica. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me listen, listen up here, right? Listen up. <laughs> if Arsenal win the league. <laughs> you're gonna see me in Jamaica. I'm coming there from. I heard you talking earlier about party, party, party. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be at all of them. All if of them. win the league, I'll be at all of them, <laughs> wherever they are. Right, whether Kingston, Moby, I'll be there. I'll be there, man. I'm all telling right. You. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you guys will be resurrecting a lot of Arsenal fans because, regardless of the results for years, we have a lot of Arsenal fans back here. Yeah, yeah and it would, be a, it would be a good time because we're right after in May, at the end of May, when the Premier League is over, June 6th, Arsenal, uh, Jamaica has its first World Cup qualifiers in the oh. national stadium. So, wow. right, Arsenal wins. Good time. You get a football game and you get some you get some parties as well. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I will be there. You're right. If, yeah. if, if, if we win this league, oh, you know, but it's, you, it's a you tough thing to win. You know what? It, that's why I think it's so important because um there's a there's a former reggae boy who works at a club in London and they want mm. to do a watch along in in Jamaica of one of their games because they have a reggae boy that plays in the Premier League um, at that club in London and they feel, they feel like doing something in Jamaica. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I think they're planning it for next year. So I'm, I, I always think like AFTV. Well, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we want to go. I, listen, I, I, I definitely want to come to Jamaica and do a, one of the watch parties. We've done one in Nigeria. We've done one in Ghana. We've done them before in America. I definitely want to come to Jamaica and do 
a watch party with uh, the fans down there. And that's like, as I said, that's that's a priority. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it this season just because um, yeah. it's so hectic now between now and the end of the season. We've got the Champions League as well. And there's just so many games. But um, Jamaica's a priority for me. I definitely want to come down there and do something with the fans down there. And I, and I think it would be incredible, you know what I mean? Because, um, <laughs> you know, I've met so many, you know, you meet fans from, I mean, already, listen, there's a big, massive Jamaican population in the UK anyway, especially in London. Yeah. But you meet so many fans from Jamaica and, listen, I, I, the passion. Passion and the vibe. Incorporate the passion with the vibe. I don't know if you have this when you, you do your stuff because we have Liverpool fans, right? They know that you're coming and they know you're Arsenal. And they're in the comment section saying that, oh my God, Robbie's not coming to Jamaica then because Liverpool. I'll <laughs> no, pick him up, man. I was they're saying that Liverpool are going to win it. Yeah. That, so, so they're saying you're not. <laughs> Listen, it's um, it's it's very, it's very, very tight, right? I I think um, Liverpool, you've got to take your hat off to them. They've done brilliantly, you know. Um, with the injuries they've had, to still be where they are, they've done brilliantly. They've got a great side. They've got a great manager in Klopp in his last season. Manchester City, we know all about them with with Guardiola. But I'll tell you, if Arsenal could win it this year, I I, I it'd be great. I think for the league as well. I mean, those two teams have been winning it you know, between them for the last, what, eight years. It'd be great to have a new name on it. You know, um, I think Arsenal is such a huge club, you know, with a worldwide fan base. I think it would be fantastic if Arsenal could do it. Um, so I'm hoping and praying that we can. And I, and I think we're good enough to do it as well. I mean, when you look at it this year, you know, we played Liverpool twice in the league. They didn't beat us. We beat them at the Emirates. We drew them at um, Anfield. We beat Manchester City. Um, at the Emirates. A lot of people seem to forget that. You know what I mean? That we have beaten them already this season. Obviously, the game at the Etihad on, on Sunday, um, I'm going to be there. It's going to be a really, really tough game. We've got a horrendous record against them. But if we can go there and do something, then you've got to really start believing that Arsenal can go all the way. And we, we, the way we've been playing this season has been fantastic. So, um, but that game on Sunday, I mean, I'm already yeah. nervous, man, about that yeah. game. You, you, you know what? So let, let me let me just say this. I think where we are this season is though we have less points statistically in terms of goal conceded and goal scored. We're we're not far away, and and that means that though we had a bad not a bad start this season, we have managed to since the start of the year to do well. And mm -hmm. I think last season at the back end of the season we had injuries we we had even gabriel magales was out saliba was out so and i mean we, we're having bad results just so many different things were happening i mm. think the team was also younger and the, i think there's added experience one and almost all the players are healthy are are they are coming back from injury which means yeah. The coach has better selection. You have two persons. You, you can use Julian Timbat right back now. Or you can use Ben White. You have three choices. Because what the injury did, it, it gave like Jakob Cure opportunity to mature in the position. So now the coach has to decide, do I use Tomiasi over there or Zivchenko or Cure? Can I just play one for this game and know that I have mm. a next one for a different type of game? For, right. You have Party. You have Jorginho. You have... You have rice, right? The only area I think um, that we would probably have some concern in is if Saka got injured. Yeah. But everywhere else, I think we are pretty much better covered than we were last season. So we can take yeah. more chances and make more changes that can impact the game. Yeah, no, definitely. And <laughs> what it is... What it is, the reason why that is, is because certain players um, have really stepped up this season. Jorginho, I think, has really stepped up coming in. You know, I mean, last year, if Thomas Partey was out, basically, we were all crying. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, that, that's it. You know what I mean? We've got, we've got no chance. We've got Declan Rice who's come in, has been absolutely exceptional. But also Jorginho, who's come in and has been really, really good as well. And now you, Partey's back now, but you're thinking... Can you really bring Partey back in for Jorginho? He's been playing that well. I think Havertz has really stepped up, you know, playing in that false number nine position. So 
we don't miss Jesus as much who's been carrying lots of injuries. Like you said, Kivior coming in at left back when there was no Zinchenko, no Tomiyasu, no Timber has come in has been brilliant. Do you drop him now? Now that those guys are fit. So it's these players that have really, really stepped up their game that have really, you know, now sh that these injured players are coming back. It's looking really, really good. But the one thing I would say, you know, Liverpool and Man City have still got that experience of these tight run-ins where, you know, teams got to, you've got to keep winning and winning and winning. Arsenal don't have that. We're a lot more mature than, mature than we were last season. I think players like Declan Rice has added a lot more steel to the team. Um, but it, we don't have that experience. But I do feel that this is a different Arsenal to last year. I really do. They they're more mature now. They 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 know what they, what they have to do. Um, but we're going to find out, aren't we? We're going to find out over the next six seven weeks. You know, um, and it's going to be it's going to be absolutely nerve wracking. I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I mean, for Sunday, Robbie. So for Sunday, right? What and who will be the key to a victory on Sunday? What do you think, based on your opinion? The key to the victory is number one: how we defend. You know, I mean, when we played at home, we locked off Haaland. Lock off Haaland, we've got to stop the distribution to him. So I think the def I think Declan Rice is key in that midfield and Jorginho, if he plays. And then I think, you know, the 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 the, the four across the back are absolute key. They, they, they've got to have a good game because Man City will have a lot of the ball. Man City will create chances and we have to defend well. But if we defend well... I do believe that we can hurt Man City. They give up a lot of chances. There's a lot of space in behind their defence. Um, they've conceded. I remember Tottenham went there, scored three goals. So they, yeah. they, they they do concede, but you've got to keep them out. They're relentless. And, they, and, and that's where we're going to have to defend really, really well. We've got to be concentrated at the back. Um, but if we can do that, we can get joy. You know, and word in the street has been, people have been saying like, what would we take at the end of the season? The Champions League or the Premier League? As you can see right there. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'd like the Premier League. You know, it's the, it's the thing that is week in, week out. Mm -hmm. That's what you're aiming to try and win. Um, I, I actually think it's harder to win the Premier League because you've got to just every week be beating, you know, these teams. But <laughs> listen, if we didn't win it, we won the Champions League. I'll take that. You know, what I mean, that's still good. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, you know, either of them would be nice. But the Premier League for me, it's been so long since we won. I know we've never won the Champions League. Sure. Um, but the Premier League for me is what. If if I could only choose one, that's the one I'm taking. I, I yeah. would love to. I would love to win that Premier League again. And here's because what I, I agree. Oh, I, I agree with that because I think what winning the Premier League would better prepare us for the Champions League next season. I, I think given what we what happened when we were expected to win, and many people said we bottled it and all of that, and to to come this close again and to be in the race mm -hmm. and to to not win again, I think mm -hmm. the, 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 the the consequences of that would be graver than if we never won the Champions League. Yeah. So, so you like, know what? I, dis I disagree with you slightly there yeah? because I, I feel that um I, I, so last last year there was a lot of um pundits and that saying oh if Arsenal don't win the league and this was last season they were going oh, if Arsenal don't win the league they they're never going to get a chance to win it again they'll never get this close and that and we we've come back this year. And we proved absolutely everybody wrong with that. And what Arsenal are basically doing now, they've got a very, very good side this, that is going to challenge not just this season, it will mm -hmm. challenge next season, it will challenge the season after. And if you keep challenging and you keep knocking on the door, you will win it eventually. You will. But you've got to be in that fight. We're in that fight. So I I, I don't think it would... I don't think it would terminally... Um, damage this team at all. I, I I think that this this team is getting stronger and stronger. And uh, yeah. I think it will. I think, you know, I think when when you're there, you're you're in that fight, you're gonna win it one time. I want it to be this year, but they this is a team built on strong foundations. And yeah. and and I feel I feel that we're very close to winning this league. I still think yeah. we're connecting the dots though. You know and there's this little stigma Sorry? thing. I'm, I still think that we're still connecting the dots. 
because there was rumors going around that we need a striker, right? Mm-hmm. That, that number nine to score, to give us some goals. But after that Dubai break that we took and come back, we keep on getting the goals, you know, we're getting the results. However, the stigma thing as it relates to, you know, Champions League, people always think that we're not the biggest club in London because we haven't won any form of silverware. With the biggest club in London. With the yeah, biggest club in London. <laughs> but you know, we have some young fans. That's, uh, that's the stigma that they run with. Chelsea is the biggest club. They won the Champions League twice. They won the Euro- the Europa League. But I still think that we are the top. We're the top. We're in the top three. Listen, club. We are the biggest club in London. Yeah, Chelsea, London is red. Chelsea, Chelsea is not the biggest club in London, and they know that, right? They know. They know. Chelsea, Chelsea. Look how many fans. Look, look how many fans. Um, also have worldwide. Look how many fans also have in the UK. Also fill any stadium. Any stadium, anywhere, any time, right? Yes, Chelsea won the Champions League, and Chelsea was a team that you know was subsidised by Roman Abramovich for a very long time, and that's where since he's gone, what are they what are they doing now, right? Exactly. So you know, I, I think you know Chelsea. You, you speak to any Chelsea fan, they'll say they're the biggest in London, but they know really they're not. If us, but what you got to say with Chelsea, they have won those big things. If Arsenal win the league, you'll see. If if Arsenal if Arsenal win the league and there's a parade, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's millions of people out on road. If yeah. Chelsea win the, the 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 league and there's a parade, there's a hundred thousand. That's facts. The three biggest clubs in England are yeah. Manchester United are the biggest club, mm-hmm. and Liverpool. Then it's Liverpool and Arsenal. Those are the three biggest clubs in this country. That's facts. Facts. Yeah. There's the three most, they're the three best supported clubs in this country. The club in London with the most support is Arsenal. That's facts. It's just that we've not won nothing. And you consider we ain't won nothing for, we haven't won a league for 20 years. So once we bring that back, you're going to see. Yeah. You know, you're yeah, going to see. But, yeah, Chelsea won them thing there. Like, like you and I said, then them, them, them have, you lot would say in Jamaica, they have a big man. They have a big man. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the big man has supplied the money. Yeah, yeah but we, we, need to, we, need, we need to stop it's helping gone. them, though. I think when we buy some of the players from Chelsea, we help them with this whole financial life. Well, no, no, well, well um, we, we've done very well out of it because we've got Havertz, who's been <laughs> excellent, and we've got Jorginho, who's been excellent. And the players yeah. that they brought in, I mean, I'm not being funny, but Enzo's not been as nowhere near as good as Jorginho or, or, or even Kante. They, not Kante, um, uh, what's the name from Brighton? He's, he's not been great. Caicedo. Caicedo's not, you know, yeah. he's a great player, but he's not had a great season. And then we, you know, Mudrik, oh, come on. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, done, well, we did all right. We, we did all right. Chelsea Chelsea. For saving us. Thank Chelsea huh? for saving us. We need to thank Chelsea for saving us from him. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because that's what I've been interested in. I, I think, though, that if he were at Arsenal, I think Mikel Arteta probably would have gotten more out of him. I think... Who, who, I think uh, Mudrik. Yeah. I, I just feel like sometimes the club that you end up at, the instability at the club, the changing of coaches, the philosophy, I think Arsenal... Is, is is a more stable club in that yeah. perspective. And I think yeah. he could have done better. He may not be worth the money that they paid. But I, I, I can't see how we were after him and he's struggling so badly. I think a lot of that has to do with the setup that he's in. I think some of it's the setup, but I have to say I've looked at him a lot this season and I've not been impressed. He, What it is with him, right? He's like, he's listen, he's obviously a very talented player, but he's, he's very... He looks a very limited player. He's very quick, very dynamic, but that's about it. He hasn't got no tricks to get past players. He's very predictable in what he does. I'm kind of glad we didn't get him. Every, every time I watch him play, I'm like, I'm, there's not a lot to his game. He might. I think he will improve next season, but I don't, listen, in no way. I mean, we 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 got Trossard right instead. <laughs> what I think is, is ten times better than Mudrik. All and, and, and Trussard is thirty. Sorry, Trussard is 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 old. He's, he's not. I don't think he's. What's Trussard? Is he twenty eight, nine? Twenty eight? Yeah, he's still he's got thirty. Isn't nah, he? No, man. No, nah, he's about yeah. twenty eight. And, and and the money that we paid for him, and and he's been excellent. 
It was reasonable. It was reasonable. Who, who scored that goal against Porto? It was him. He's been he's come up with some big goals for us, and 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 he's been a very good player. And he's just a way better than Modric. Yeah, way I like, better. I like, I like, I like how X, X call him. We don't. He's not expression. He's X, right? X. X he, he's going to be certain. X call him what the Ukraine, the Ukraine bolt. Yeah, Ukraine bolt. Ukraine bolt. Ukraine bolt. Yeah. Ukraine bolt. He's, 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 he's very quick. He's very quick. He's very dynamic. And I do think. He's not a bad player, but he's just... You know what it is? It's the price tag, man. That 80-odd million. Him and um the other one, Anthony, the uh, United. <laughs> How? They're, they're agents. The agents of those players, man. Trust me. I, I want them to come and manage me. You know, you know listen, Anthony is not a real Brazilian, though. <laughs> There's oh. no way you'd look that way. But <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, over the years, there's something else that I have seen improvement on. You know the signings that we have bring in in the in the Arsenal football team has been good because yeah. you see the quality of them. Even if they don't perform as well this season, you're seeing it. Uh, I see Lakanga in Luton. He was at Luton right now. He's playing some good football. I'm wondering if we'll see him in the yeah. team next season. Yeah, I, I mean Lakanga, I, I, he, he wasn't having a good time of it at Arsenal, but. Sometimes some of these players, what it is, they need to go somewhere and play on a regular basis. And that's what he's done. He's he's gone to Luton and he's playing week in, week out, and he's he's doing well. I'm not sure if he'll <laughs> that position he's playing here at Arsenal, man, is a lot of competition yeah. there. You know, he's 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 gonna find it very difficult, even with what he's been doing at Luton to get back in the team. I do get the feeling he could get sold. Um, but he's having a good season. He is having a good season. Yeah. So let let let's just um Move, uh, there are so many things to talk uh, we want to maximize the time uh wonder if kieran tyranny has a future i don't think to, i think he's going to be sold as well i don't think yeah. he wants to come back i think the position is crowded based on how arteta wants to play so someone is asking if tyranny has a future at arsenal i don't i don't think no, I, don't, so. I think um i think kieran tyranny will be sold end of the season yeah. um he, he um he, he's liking it in spain wants to stay there it's been a shame because i like him um, but he doesn't really suit the system that Mikel Arteta wants to play with that inverted fullback. And also, he's very, very injury prone. I mean, the guy's always injured. It's not his fault, but it's just unfortunate. So I do think he'll be sold at the end of the season. So so who do you want in the summer? If he had a choice and he had one striker, Isaac? Isaac at I, I like Isaac. Isaac. I do Isaac, like Isaac. Tony yeah, or... Uh, or um, t uh, Man over there in Italy. Osimhen. Awesome. Awesome. I like I like all three of them. I like all three of them. I like, but Osimhen will be very expensive. So will Tony, and so will Isak. All three of them. But <laughs> out of those, out of those three, I'd have any of those three. I think yeah. they're all very good players. All three of them. I see this player called called Victor Girakis. He's he played yeah. in the championship, I think. For um, yeah, he was at Coventry. He was at Coventry. Yeah. yeah. He was at Coventry and nobody nobody bought him. He's a sporting came in and bought him and now they want about 80 million for him. But he's been he's been doing really, really well as well. Um any, any of those I mean, you know, any of those strikers, I think I do think Arsenal do need a I mean, I do like Osimin. I do like Osimin. I think he's gonna do if when he does come to the Premier League, whether it's Arsenal, whether Chelsea get him. Um, I do think he'll do well in the Premier League. I think his 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 play suits the Premier League. Yeah, uh, some people have been saying that um, Marcus Rashford should be an option for Arsenal um, yeah. because Arteta would get the best out of him. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that one alone. Uh, probably, you know? yes, he might be at one of those parties at halfway tree you was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he, likes, right. he likes a party, right? Nah, yeah. Rashford's, Rashford's a good player, but I, 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 I don't. Nah, nah. Yeah. All right. Still considering Ivan Tony. Sorry. Still considering an Ivan Tony. I like Ivan Tony. I just wonder if the age factor. Um, mm -hmm. he's twenty eight now. Maybe Arsenal might be looking for a younger profile player. That's the only thing that I think. But he's, you know, I, I wouldn't be against it. He's, he's a very, very good striker, very confident player, and he's, 
He's Premier League ready. You know what I mean? He's played in the Premier League now for the past couple of seasons. He knows what it's all about and he'd hit the ground running. Um, so I, I like Ivan Tony. Right. Listen, uh, yeah, so let's get to, into something that's very important to us. It, it is the connection between Jamaica and England, especially when it comes on to football. I think of mm -hmm. all the Caribbean nations, there, there is a feeling that Jamaica, players of Jamaican heritage, the numbers are greater than any of the other Caribbean islands. And yeah. if we go back to 1998, you know, we go back to John Barnes, who, who represented England. We have like a Ryan Sterling. I mean, when we counted even the last England squad that went to the World Cup, <clears throat> players who were in it that are of Jamaican heritage, Ian Wright, right? Um, the last England squad, there were eight players who have Jamaican heritage in the England squad to the World Cup, all right? Mm. Now... There is this big debate about what, what, what is preventing it, what needs to happen so that more of these players can feel a greater sense of connection to the island and want to represent. How difficult is that given that most of them probably have never even been to Jamaica? They are probably not like you who have had visit to the island. Um, they are probably third generation. How is it a difficult thing and what needs to happen? And how do you view it? I think it, I think it's a difficult thing because, you know, when you've got like, um, for instance, a lot of the talented players that you just uh, talked about there, they would have come through the academy system in, in uh, the UK. And, you know, if they're, if they're top talented players that, you know, playing in the Premier League, they probably played for England uh, under 17 level, under 21. Under, you know what I mean? So they then start to see it as their natural progression is they want to play for England. And, you know, when you play for, when you play for England, you know, your profile goes through the roof, you know, you, you know, you, you sponsor, you know, companies want to sponsor you, you know, you're, you're, you're just on a different stratosphere when you, you when you become an England international and a, and a regular England international. So I think that's the difficulty. You know what I mean? That's the difficulty for Jamaica's, uh, as I said, a lot of those players, have been playing for England at a youth level coming up. Um, so I guess what then happens is that you'll have certain players that look on it and say, well, it's not looking like I'm going to get into the England setup on a regular basis. So maybe I'll have Jamaica as an option. And I think that's what's happening a lot that, you know, um, I don't think it's that those players are disrespecting Jamaica. It's just that they've come through the system. So I think what, what Jamaica would, could really do with doing is trying to capture these players early and try and get them coming through their system um, so that, you know, they, they've sort of grown up in the Jamaica system and then they might see it as a natural progression to then go and play for Jamaica. But it's really difficult because, you know, the the, the scouting system over here, they, they you know, England, they they look at players. And as soon as a player has got a bit of talent, they're going to grab them for the under-17s. They're going to grab them for the under-19s. They've got a great setup up here, you know, with St. George's Park and 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 the, the, the way those players, are, you know, uh, coach and everything there. So it is difficult. It is difficult for Jamaica. I don't, I don't think the, the, the Jamaican fans should be too hard on those players because it is a very difficult decision for them to make to decide, you know, when they sort of come through a system. And like you said, there are some of those players that probably they haven't even been to Jamaica, some of them. Um, yeah. So, but I think that's the challenge. The challenge is that England scoop up all these players from very, very early, get them going through their youth system, um, playing for the under-17s, under-19s, under-50, you know, and and so those players feel in a, an affiliation to England. I'm wondering if even in the homes, is is there anything that teaches the Jamaican culture for for some for some of these? Because is it are they aware? Yeah. Even of their connection to Jamaica and the culture of Jamaica um, in their the household. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. I think like the the culture of Jamaica is very very strong in the UK. I mean, you see it everywhere. You see how people talk, even how 
you know, the, the lingua amongst even white people in this country. Lots of Jamaican, um, the influence over here is heavy. So it's not like they're grown up in a household and they're not aware of their Jamaican roots. They, they are. They are. It's just the fact that, as I said, if you're a talented footballer and you're young and you're coming up through the system in this country and you're doing really, really well, England will come knocking very early and try and get you in. Because, you know, you, you've got to remember as well that sometimes England having to compete with like Scotland and Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland as Wales. So they want to get those players into their system early and try and sort of persuade them that, yo, England is where if you do well, you need to play for England. And then you got to consider this as well. A player's, you know, all these players have got agents, right? An agent is going to be saying to his player, play for England. The profile you're going to get, you're going to get a bigger boot deal by playing for England. England um, is one of the best supported nations in the world. You know, um, England will play at Wembley. They could, England could play at Wembley against San Marino and they'll get, you know, a sellout crowd. It's, it's, their following that they have is ridiculous here. You know what I mean? Football is the number one sport in this country. So your profile goes through the roof. England are going to make it to the World Cup literally every time. England are going to be at the Euros every time. And a player might be, you know, an agent's going to be an agent's going to be saying to his player, are Jamaica going to be at the World Cup? You don't know. He's, the chances of them getting to the World Cup is nowhere near the same as England. You know, um, so come and play for England. Your profile is going to be higher. And that is why, that is the difficulty. That is the difficulty. It's not because these players are not aware of Jamaica. It's not because I don't feel that these players look on Jamaica and think, I don't want to play for Jamaica. I think they would like to play for Jamaica, a lot of them. But those challenges of, you know, when it comes down to it, England or Jamaica, it's a really... Yeah. It's really difficult for Jamaica to compete, unfortunately. Yeah, but there, there's an uh, there's another side which is um, this whole. A lot of players recently have been getting like these one caps, and then you don't hear about them again. And the sentiment is, see, look what they did to you. All they were trying to do is to get you not to play for Jamaica. No, you're stuck. You can't play. You're not going to make by the England squad. You can't play for Jamaica again. You're still a young player. I think even Ainsley from Arsenal. Ains you make Lenars, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, is, isn't there a part of a player that needs to look and say, uh, how am I am I good enough to be a regular in this team? Or is this just to give me a one cap? And then after that, yeah. I mean, how is isn't that also something to consider? And we have seen other players um who have gone through that. And um, you don't really you see two, three games and that's it. They never get called back to the England setup and they can't switch nationality. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. But as I said, at the end of the day, when England come calling, the pressure that that player's under to play for them, the pressure from his agent, the pressure from his advisors who are saying, listen, the profile of playing for England, you know, it might not be one cap. You might go and play for England, do well. You might get 50 caps. You might play at a World Cup. You might play at the Euros. The profile of England, you know, it's just, it's honestly like when England at the World Cup, this country stops. Everything stops when England are playing at the World Cup or the Euros, everything. <laughs> I mean, all eyes yeah. are on that. Even whether it be the men's team, the women's team, football, the, the, the profile is off the scale. So as I said, your agent if he's got anything about him, he's going to be advising you to play for England. He'll be yeah. go, you can go, you can go and play for Jamaica, but are they going to get to the, and I, I'm just being honest here. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to put down um, Jamaica in any way because of this. And I, I love to see the Jamaican team doing well. It's great that they got the bronze the other day, but he's going to be looking and say, what's Jamaica's chances of getting to the world cup. And what's England's chances of getting to the world cup. And you've just got a cap. And if you go and do well for your club, you could be going away with England to the World Cup with a chance to win it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's true. That's we we think like, for example, you know, a good example is that we think like Reese Nelson has a better chance of uh, going to the World Cup with Jamaica than England right now. Yeah, he does. 
does. He, he, so, so we we think there there's a, there's a group of players at, and and without undermining them, but you have some elite players. There are like there are like thirty players in the Premier League that you know that um, these are Garrett Southgate's players, probably like thirty five, and you are not in that. If it but goes up, to in, but you could still get in it. You could get in it. As, um, <laughs> A player could get injured and you're in. Yeah. So, uh, so you yeah. know, you, you, you've you always got that hope that you could get in it. Or next season, you know, Raheem Sterling was a fixture in England's team. He's not no more. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, you can go and have a good season. So, you say, let's say you're Cole Palmer at uh, Chelsea. He's nowhere near the England side last season. Now, all of a sudden, he's in the England team. And he could be going to the World Cup. So that's the that's the, the dream that those players are holding on to. And that is a difficulty that Jamaica... And it's not just Jamaica, right? I think Jamaicans have to remember as well. You, you could play like Declan Rice. He, he played for Ireland first. He played for the Republic of Ireland. And England, England are like, what, oh, you want to play for the Republic of Ireland? Or you want to come and play for us? You play for us, you'd be, you'd be one of our main guys. And he decided, even though he played for... Republic of Ireland at youth level and under 21 is that he decided that he's going to play for England. And last week he was the England captain. And he's, yeah. one, he's a high profile player. He's played for England now at a World Cup. He's played for England at the Euros. Republic of Ireland didn't qualify for the Euros. Grealish as well. I think Gre Grealish, Grealish is the same thing. He played Grealish as well. Yeah, Grealish as yeah. well. And, and, and again, you know what I mean? He played at World Cup. He's played at Euros. Republic of Ireland didn't qualify for either of those. Republic of Ireland have not qualified for the next Euros. Here's what, though. For this World Cup in 2026, problem. though, big problem. I, I think Jamaica is in pole position given the increased numbers. USA not playing. Mexico not playing. Canada not playing. We also have a Copa America that we have qualified for. So That's I think, right. like, you, you know, when those things happen, then players can, you know, can can probably look at it but it, like i said it's not a it's not an easy decision and that's what i want people to know because a lot it's of times tough. yeah a lot of times we believe because you have a son right yeah. who plays football imagine he's 17 and england wants him in their u17 and jamaica wants you to come and send him to play a qualifiers right he has an agent and stuff and there's a big deal on the table People need to know that it's not easy to say, okay, yeah, man, go and play for Jamaica because man, love yard, you know. I mean, you're rubber from Max <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and that's what that's what it comes down to, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's either that, just pure love, or you're going to say, boy, you know what I mean? The sensible decision is you're going to go and play for England because I, I'm going to be saying to my son, well, boy, you play for England, you could be and you play really well, you could be at the World Cup. You could be at the Euros. You could be... Look at Saka's profile from playing for England. Not just, you know, not just... He's, he obviously got a massive profile playing for Arsenal. But his profile of playing for England as well has put him on another level. Same with Rashford, all these guys. So it's a, it's a, it's a really, really tough decision for these players. I don't think Jamaicans should look on it and feel like these players are disrespecting... Jamaica, or they're turning their back on Jamaica. They're not. It's 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 a very very tough decision that they face. And as I said, the influence, all the influences around them, is pushing them towards playing for England. And if you're a professional footballer, let's be real right now, you want to play at the World Cup, you want to play at the Euros, you know, um, you, you know. And if you're playing for England, you're almost guaranteed that you're going to be in those competitions. If you're playing for Jamaica, unfortunately, at this moment in time, you're not guaranteed. At Jamaica, the last World Cup was that was '98. I was there. I went to I went to um, France. I remember I went to Jamaica when they played uh, Argentina, and they lost yeah. five 0 Batistuta scored that trick. I was at that game, right? So, but the level, you know, in England that they've been at every World Cup in recent times, and they've done well. They got to the quarterfinals, yeah. the last one. They got to semi. They got to the finals of the Euro. So it's a no-brainer, really, from a football perspective. Obviously. And, and we have also heard stories. Well, hold on. We have also heard stories of players who have opted to play for like team like Jamaica when they go back to their clubs. It it 
it also affects their position in the club as well or their status sure. in the club so so there is also that side that um they may not only be making a sacrifice to 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 choose Jamaica over England but it could cause them to to go through just difficulties at their at their yeah, club and again yeah. you you're making a good point because there's there's football clubs they don't want their players they don't even want their players to go and play for England let alone to travel halfway across the world to go and play for Jamaica they don't want it they want the players to stay you know look at <laughs> the other day when Saka pulled out Gabriel's pulled out of Brazil I don't think they're that injured. <laughs> now, so when you then when you then go to the manager and say, "Yeah, you know, Jamaica playing Honduras or something like that," the manager's thinking, uh, "Yeah, listen, man, I really want you. <laughs> do you have to go to that game?" I, that happens as well. That is facts. Okay. So another thing, I think mainly it's because of the pressure sometimes by the fans because as Simplest thing looks. Some of the time, things come out in media, you know. And when you look at the players that England has at, at their disposal, I think some of the times you're wondering, or we're wondering as fans, uh, and thinking about the picking order, the picking order for each position. You have like five quality players in front or in consideration before another. You think you're gonna be in consideration or in contention. Some of the times, that's what give the fans, you know, confident. And a feeling like you know we, we yeah. can get this player, we can get this player. But as I said, right, what you have to remember is also your advisors and your agent are going to be saying you don't want to jump the gun. So, like I said, if you're Cole Palmer, if you went, if Cole Palmer, if you'd have gone to him last year and said, "Yeah, come and play for Jamaica, man," look, your chance of getting into the England team, you, you got no chance. You're nowhere near that. There's Raheem Sterling there. There's this man. There's that man. Come and play for. Now, all of a sudden, he goes and says he's having a great season for Chelsea in the England side. He'll probably go to the World Cup as well. So your agent, again, is going to be saying to you, don't jump the gun. Don't go and do that yet. Let's wait. Right? Let's wait and see what happens. Because you, all it takes is for you to, to have a very good season, and then you can be in contention for the England team. Players that are fixtures in the team can... I mean, um, Calvin Phillips was an absolute fixture. In the, in the England team. Now he's not. He's had a horrible season. Now all of a sudden, he's not a fixture. Jordan Henderson's not a fixture. So all of a sudden, Kobe Mainu, if you'd have gone to Kobe Mainu at Manchester United and you said to him, Kobe, come and play for, uh, I think he's a Ghanaian, I think, actually. But if you said, come and play for Ghana, you got no chance of, listen, man, what's your chances of getting in the England team? You had no chance, man. Look at them man that is in front of you. Southgate never drops Calvin Phillips. <laughs> yeah. This season, Calvin Phillips has been dropped. That's why you see a lot of players hold on. And I think fans need to do understand that. It's not, these are, these are the things that these players are being told. Hold. Don't go nowhere yet. Don't go to this. And it's not just Jamaica, because there's a lot of players that have got dual nationalities with other countries, the USA, all kind of... The, the, the advisors saying to me, hold on, wait. Give it Even give it a couple of seasons because you could have a great season and you're in the England team. Yeah, I think I think that is true. But but, but we, we we just think like some of these players have no no shot, but then a player believes he has a shot. And and, and, thing, and, and, and I think that I said, is a you, you, yeah. you would have said that about Kobe Mainu last year. You would have said that about Cole Palmer. You'd have said that there's many other players as well. You'd say that about you yeah. say, well, you got no chance. Now they're yeah. in the team. Yeah. And 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 then how how should Jamaica treat with this issue? So we come knocking on your door right now because we have Copa American World Cup. And you say, boy, I'm holding on because I think I have a shot at England. We qualify for the World Cup. Right? And now we are in the World Cup. All right. And then you turn up and say, listen, I'm ready now because it don't look like I'm going to make it for England. Oh, how is that treated? Because we had that issue with, with uh, I think, in 1998, and it created some conflict with some of the players about yeah. who waited until, yeah. But how about that? I think, yeah. Jamaica, I think how you have to look on it is that this, this is the reality. This is the reality. If, if, if Jamaica got to the World Cup, 
the reality of it is, is that could be the trigger that changes some of these players that are on the fringes' minds. And they might say, well, you know what? I've got a chance to go and play in a World Cup with Jamaica. I've always dreamed of playing at the World Cup. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go and play at the World Cup. And if you, as long as then Jamaica, as long as they think that that player is going to come in and give everything for the for the country and give everything for the badge, then why not? But yeah. I think people do have to understand the decisions these players have to make. They're, they're, they're very tough. And it's not a disrespect to Jamaica. It's, it's These are big... These are big footballing decisions. But, yeah, listen, Jamaica getting into the World Cup would help those decisions. It would help make up the minds of certain people for, for, for definite. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, you're playing in a World Cup, and that's that's a lot of players' dream. Hey, hey so so you, you go to the game, Reese, Reese plays and uh, Emil Smith Rowe plays, and they, hey, they say, hey, Dan Robbie, man, we heard that you're on a Jamaican podcast talking about this thing. You know, um, Jamaica, they have reached out to us. Tell us, do you think we should go out there or wait at England, man? Well, I'll, I'll try and persuade them to go to Jamaica. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to give a help in that, but it's not, trust me, I know how these, uh, I know the agents of some of these players and that. And it ain't gonna come down to what me. <laughs> <laughs> Their man are gonna be in their ears every day saying, "Boy, wait!" But getting into a World Cup makes a big, big difference. Even the Copa America, those things make a big difference. And then as well, I think other players sort of going through and seeing, you know, other players playing. I mean, I don't think that. I saw that Liam Bailey, Leon Bailey interview the other day. I don't think that helps things when players hear that because again, they're thinking. Mm. Is it yeah. organized down there? What's going on? Are we gonna yeah? You know I mean, so again, that that I don't think that helped. Um, but getting into a world cup would help, that would be massive. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You, you know, you know, you know what I think as well is like um you, you have seen Jamaican fans, and you have seen uh, we don't think like our fans are passionate, like like we, we have like yeah. Demarai Gray. Mikel Antonio, Ethan Pinnock, Leon Bailey, Shamar Nicholson, Andre Blake, all of these guys, Bobby, Bobby Reed, Reed, all of these mm -hmm. guys on the field, and we have like empty stadium, right? Mm. We, we see England lose a game, and the next game at the Wembley, it's sold out, so right? Cool. Like, like Arsenal, for example, Arsenal losing, Park Stadium, Arsenal, North London forever. <laughs> All of those things, songs being done for players, right? They, they may quarrel, but they turn up. Jamaica is kind of different because we quarrel and we're not turning up, right? What is it about the fan culture in like in Europe and in England specifically that even when if Arsenal lose against, say, City, the home game, next home game, there are still season ticket holders that are going to turn up. They will turn up and watch England, which is something that we don't see in our own island. Like we call ourselves, most of us are we call bandwagonists. Like I don't know if you know that term, but it's yeah, wagonists. Yeah. <laughs> wagonists. Yes. I used to call Chelsea fans that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> A Man City fan. Um, no. Um. Listen, football in England is like it's it's absolutely massive. It's, it's a football. If it does anything wrong, it's front page news. Like it's the biggest thing in this country, and I just feel that like um, sport in this country is followed so well. Like especially football. So England is probably probably the best supported team in the in the world. I, I, the only other team I think can get gets the support that England get on a consistent basis is probably Brazil, maybe Germany. The, the, the support England get is ridiculous, even when they go away from home. And it's the same with the teams in the Premier League. Even in the Championship, I, I was driving today um, and I saw about 10 coaches of West Brom fans heading to Millwall. It's in the culture here. You know what I mean, the fans travel all around the country to, to, to watch their, their team. So... I don't think Jamaica's going to be ever to be able to compete with the following that it has in this country because it is like a national institution. But and, and I think basically in Jamaica, what they have to do is they start looking at how do they get the fans in? How do they engage those fans 
engage with those fans to get them into the stadiums is you know do 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 do, uh, do there is a price structure i don't know what the prices are like um are they connecting the players with the fans to then bring them in are they bringing in the younger generation to the stadium so that they get used to that use becomes a thing going to watch the national team all those sort of things need to be taken into account because um that's how you start to build a following for um, your team. And then, of course, success. You know, England, England's always a team that, you know, the next Euros come in, like most people think that England have got a chance of winning it. So they're going to watch, you know, they're going to watch, they're going to go and watch. So um, I, I really do feel that, you know, they, you know, it's it's hard to compete with England when it comes to football because the following, <laughs> even the, even the smallest team in the Premier League sells out their stadium. Stadium, yeah, and uh, they're not so even much, in the, and and even in the Championship, Championship, teams, yep. they get unbelievable support. You got teams in the Championship get better support than teams in La Liga. Yeah, uh, uh, see, we have someone from France saying France has a lot of support as well, and their games are normally sold out. And someone from no, Mexico, France, saying, no, we can't, it's not even close to England support when it comes to football. Not okay. even close. I was at the World Cup um, when England played France. France, they, 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 they had a decent support, but nowhere near what England had. The, the traveling support that England had, France don't have that. The yeah. big traveling supports, the big supporting nations in football, England, Brazil, Germany, Brazil, Mexico. Um, Mexico's got a. <laughs> I, I, I think Mexico is one of those underachieving world yeah. because they, their support is amazing. Colombia, we were at, we were at Argen, Argentina as well. Argentina, yeah. Colombia, those 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 countries have amazing support. Um. The Netherlands have got amazing support as well, uh, um, you know. But unfortunately, Jamaica and Jamaica is um, a much smaller country than some of these countries we're talking about as well. So we have to take that into account as well. What yeah. I think, what I think though, with vibes surrounding the team, as you said, one of the ways we can get person in the stands, you know, is success winning. If this te ke team keep a uh, good momentum going. And scoring yeah. a lot of goals, you know, getting in the right players, you know, building that camaraderie within the team. I think it's going to be a problem for some persons trying to get into the national stadium because we have diaspora support, persons flying in to come and watch the team at the national yeah. stadium. So I think it's going to take some time, but we have to win because we have a wagonist culture, like you said. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, it's yeah. going to take some time. And I think that when once we're playing consistent football, getting the results, we can have a packed stadium. Yeah, I've, I, I, I feel you can. And success and also, you know I mean, stars as well. Like, you know I mean? When you've got star footballers, that brings people, you know. So, I, I, I listen, I, 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 but the success thing, definitely. I mean, when when Jamaica played in, uh, in, in the World Cup in 98, they had huge support. As I said, oh, yeah. I went to that game. I went to the game when they played Argentina. They had massive support there. I mean, they had supporters who came from all over the world to support Jamaica. Yeah. Um, so, things, yeah. Right. So the, the the interest will be there. You know what I mean? There's there's enough Jamaicans around the world. The interest is there. You know what I mean? But I think they just need to harness that now and really work hard on harnessing that support, engaging with that support. You know, because you know, I I, I Jamaica's a cool place. Everybody wants to be associated with Jamaica. So um, I really do think that the, the opportunity is there to raise the profile of Jamaican football. Yeah, I think a, a couple of things, uh, you can give us your thoughts on this. One is, like, th there's normally this idea that what Jamaica need, you are an entertainer, know you have big Q out there, you understand me? <laughs> Used to be out there in the... In the yeah. That's all business, you know, busting big cues and stuff like that. So, you know, but people have always said we need to merge entertainment with the football, meaning when we have a game at the stadium, just have an entertainment packages with some of our big artists, and hopefully that will pull out fans. But great idea. Is it? Yeah, great what idea. It? That's what I'm asking. If that is in, in when Arsenal has a game, there is there any entertainment? No, they don't have to. 
<laughs> because okay. uh, you know they know that the fans are going to come <laughs> regardless, right? You know what I mean? I mean, there's fans going to the game. It's like minus ten. They're still there. They don't have to do. But I think when you've got to, when you now need to try and get fans in, you need to work out different ways of getting them in. And I think that's a great idea. Why not? Why not harness that? You know what I mean? The, Jamaica's got great entertainers, right? They're all, you know, I, I've, I know that lots of them are passionate about football. Use it. Use it. Use that. Use Usain Bolt. Use all these guys that love football and they're really, really famous. Use that to push the game. Of course. Yeah. Because yeah, some, of the fans are asking, some of the fans are asking for you to do a, a song and the song must be No Sniff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired now, man. I'm retired. I'm retired. <laughs> mm -hmm. The other I'm thing is that, music days. <laughs> see that I mean, I mean, we have had a long history with England, where we had a whole wind rush, where many Jamaicans went there to help and build that nation, having gone yeah. through, you know, a time of slavery when a lot of the wealth was extracted and and resources, and 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 there's a lot of Jamaican who believe they, they're. England should make an effort to provide opportunities for like a Jamaica national team to play against England as an example, as a means of helping the football, given some of the things that happened years ago. Um, you, you know, like where is the, the support back to the nation for all of those things and for all the work that was done in the past? Or that is just something we need to get past and just forge our own pathway, not, think, not relying yeah. or waiting on them. Exactly. Yeah. Forge your own pathway. Like football, money runs things in football. That's facts. I see it all the time in the Premier League, Champions League. It's all about the money, right? And, you know, I don't think Jamaica sitting back and trying to rely on England to come and play a game against them. I mean, it would be nice. I'd love to see it. That's not the way. Jamaica need to forge their own thing, like you said. They've got there's many ways to market the game. I mean, the whole even the whole reggae boys tag, I think, was genius. Tagging that to the team, but use it more. Take more advantage of it. Use some of these artists to um to promote the game because the artists are well known all around the world. So use them. Use these figures, like as I said, like your Usain Bolt and people like that. Make them ambassadors for the whole thing and really, really push it in a, you know, especially to the younger generation. Let them get really get behind it because, you know, I think Jamaica is such a cool brand, right? You, you, why do you think Adidas, yeah, like does all this Jamaican stuff that always sells out? By the way, and every time saying. Jamaica, every time Jamaica put out something like a new shirt or something, immediately that sold out. I know that I've spoken to someone at Adidas, right? That's because it's like deemed as a cool brand, but I don't think they're harnessing that enough down there in Jamaica. That, um, I don't know who's organizing yeah. the organization, but if they could really harness that, really take advantage of that. And then, of course, on top of that, you need a good side. And if you've got a good side, they're starting to win. But I think at the moment, there's good signs, right? Because you pushed America all the way the other day, came, got the bronze or in the Copper America. Things are looking up. But you've got to harness all those things now to really take advantage. Yeah. You've got to really market this Jamaican team off of that reggae boys tag and really market it around the world because there's Jamaicans everywhere. I've been everywhere around the world. <laughs> I was in China. I was in China as Jamaican man. Yo, boss, what are you doing down here? I go, well, how you get to China? He said, well, I meet one Chinese girl in our world. Yeah. <laughs> We're everywhere. The Jamaicans are everywhere. Use yeah. it, <laughs> use it, use it and promote the team because yeah. it's, I don't like to describe it as a brand because obviously Jamaica is a country, it's a beautiful country, but brand Jamaica is such a cool brand. And yeah. as I said, if you don't believe that, why are Adidas sponsoring Jamaica? They could sponsor anybody Adidas. Yeah. Why are they sponsoring Jamaica? Why is it that every time they put something out, Despite, I mean, no matter how Jamaica are playing, they sold out because everybody, the wants, to wear that. everybody wants to wear that thing with Jamaica on it, even I if they're I, not Jamaican. I, most, of the people wear, yeah. most of the people wearing it are not Jamaican. 
Yeah. You know what is so funny, right? The, the same thing someone said to me, like, listen, so they're, uh, they want Adidas to actually ship the products to Jamaica, but I'm saying that they don't need to do that. Why would they ship it when the moment they put it on their site, they're all sold? So they had the sweaters that we wore at the Nations League, and the mm. moment they went up, they were all, they were all done. Yeah. Right, we, we see Ajax, for example, doing the um making the Bob Marley song part of their whole thing, and they had, I think, last season their jersey. They had that kit, they had to, they yeah, had, they the had Bob Marley, yes. the Bob Marley kit. Arsenal last year had a Jamaican, Jamaican training, yes. kit. even Liverpool that, fans bought that. That that kit sold out. You cannot get that for the people. I, I, I've been to the shop, there's people in the who work in the Arsenal shop, so people still come in asking for that top now, they can't get it. The Jamaican colors. Yeah. They're missing a trick. Market that. Market that. I was in, I was in Miami um, at a soccer conference, a soccer X conference in November. You want to see the way that Miami, in a Miami, are marketing the life out of Messi. Messi. <laughs> and now they've become yeah. this huge club. They were just a little small club in the MLS before. Now they're like the MLS's main club because of men. They're not even playing the best. They didn't no, even no. make the playoffs when I was there. There was when I was there, they hadn't even made the playoffs, but that's the best selling top. That's the shirt everybody I know it's messy, but that's the shirt that everybody wants. And they play off of that. They go to town with marketing that. And that club now, the value of that club has gone right up because of it. That's what Jamaica need to do. Market brand Jamaica. Use the reggae artists, use the big personalities and um, like you use saying bots and people like that to really push the game at home and abroad. Get yeah. the youngsters involved, get the youth involved, get them, you know, if you have to give away some tickets, give them a way to get them involved. They'll start coming, they'll start getting used to going and then they'll start paying because they're like, yo, I'm used to going to see Jamaica play. Yeah. And they start to get, that's how you start to build up that support. You can't just overnight think you're going to compete with England. England been doing this thing for you know, over 100 years. And the support that England have got, England, they could, listen, they could lose five games in a row. It'd still be packed. It's the way it's been built. So Jamaica's got to get smart with um, how they're going to do that if they're going to get that support in. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And like you have gone way past time, but this is so, so good. The people are asking <laughs> next time. Listen, but you have everyone keep asking, when are you coming to? I know you said that if when Arsenal wins the league, but I know yeah, that if Arsenal win the league, if Arsenal win the league, you'll see me in Jamaica like, like soon June. this year. But when is. And I'll be there. But I'm coming here for a party, but I'm coming there this year. I'm coming to Jamaica. So, so when the season the restart, the 2024 to 2025 season, can we at least have some expectation that the national stadium, Arsenal fans, Liverpool, maybe Arsenal versus Liverpool, watch along in the national stadium. In the national <laughs> stadium. You just told me Jamaica can't feel it. You want me to try and feel the national stadium? No, I'm telling you. <laughs> listen. You'll be surprised. Certain, Robbie, that's, you'll that's be surprised. That's people. Come on. You'll be, surprised. You'll be surprised. <laughs> People like excitement. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, listen, I, I definitely want to come to Jamaica before the end of this uh, year and mm -hmm. do same sort of watch party like what we did in Ghana. I want to do that. Um, I feel very. I feel like I have to do Jamaica. I have to. I have to. We, there's there's a lot of other countries that are talking to me at the moment. We are uh, South Africa, Rwanda. And, and, and those places are going to happen as well, but we got to do Jamaica. Jamaica has to happen, um, and and um, we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen, you know. Um, and I, I I haven't been there for a while. I, I used to Jamaica's a place I used to go all the time, and I haven't. I've been so busy over the years. I haven't been, and I, and and then when I've wanted to go just on a holiday, then something else has come up. So I really, really want to get down there. That I, sp I speak to fans from there all the time. Um, speak to my family down there all the time, and, I, and I've got to get out there to to. Right now, AFTV need a yardman line. So in time, the man they want yardman they want to get on the show. We have a local, we have a local backline for call. You understand me? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we need we need a different line. You know, the yard man they need a different line. Cause when you call for your Jamaican phone, by the time you get through, you have no credit left. <laughs> exactly. well, we've got um, you know what we've got. We've got this thing called Fan Zone. What what we do, which is works off of our app, where you can just use that and come through onto the show. So it shouldn't cost you anything if you come in onto the app. I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, obviously, you got you'd have to be just on broadband. Um, you just have to be online. So you just go through. in the App Store, right? Get the app. The AFTV, yeah, yeah, get the app. Yeah. AFTV, yeah, yeah. AFTV yeah. Plus, and and Plus. then you can use that. And as long as you're, as long as you're online. Um, it shouldn't cost you anything. You've got a decent internet. It shouldn't cost you anything. You can come on and speak after games. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be out. That that will be active after the um, after the Man City game on Sunday. So um, <laughs> make sure you check that out. Um, and I just, yeah, as well, once again, as I said, I really, really want to come to Jamaica, um, to do to do something. Um, but if we, if we win the league. Regardless of a watch party, I'm coming down anyway. If it's if it's for if it's for a few days, I'm coming down and I've got I've got to come party with some of them Jamaican fans. Hey, listen, I don't know where these people like you know the comment comment section is very volatile. This guy said, "Come see your baby mama and Maxwell Rami." <laughs> Oh, wait, Max, we love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? Real bad man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they're asking you, when is, when is it coming home for England? Wow. <laughs> that was not me. Was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what, what did you say? Coming home for what? <laughs> England. Yeah. You know that, that little term they use whenever it's Euros or World Cup. It's season. coming home. Oh, it's coming home. It's it's coming. Coming. England. England have got a very good side and uh, they've got the Euros coming up. I think England have got a very good chance of winning it. I did say, I thought that we'd win, win the World Cup. I, I said that when we, we was in Qatar. I was I was at that game and Harry Kane missed that penalty, man. I still can't believe it. But, um, Harry Kane is cursed. I tell you that X thing. Man, curse, man. man. Man, curse, Bayern, man. Curse. Man, Bayern oh, Munich. They can't even win the Bundesliga. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, um, I think England have got a good chance of winning the Euros. It's got to come home soon, man. Like <laughs> we've got such a good side at the moment, man. We've got such a good side. You know, what I mean, Foden, Saka, Harry Kane. Declan Rice. I mean, it's such a good team, and they've got to win something eventually. I but mean, you, you know, guys... in Jamaica, right? So, you, you know, when you soon in Jamaica, you never man at Jamaica tell us, yeah, man, me soon reach. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, when yeah, it's it, well, it, 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 coming home soon, we think about Jesus Christ and that, you know, he's coming soon, and we're still waiting, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's the same with, it's the, same with the England team, man. Like, I don't know, with the big underachievers. But soon, it's soon, soon come, soon come. 2028, 2028 when you guys are hosting the tournament as well. I know you yeah. guys are preparing for that. So 2028, just in yeah, case. Well, we, we, yeah, 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 we hosted the Euros and we got to the final, but we lost. So yeah, let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah with the penalty by Saka. Listen, it, it was so good having you on. Listen, it's AFTV people, and I mean, it's it's one of the channels that the Manchester United fans in Jamaica watch, the Liverpool fans, because it's Jamaican, and we we always seek to support brand Jamaica. It's so good to see like troops, you know, with the Jamaica, like I said, the Jamaican connection, Yardman, Curtis Shaw, um, as well, um, uh, Charlene. Mm. Um, Lori, you, Cecil. Um, Cecil. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a lot of so Jamaican, many persons, large Jamaicans in um in England, man, especially in London. So um, it's no surprise, it's no surprise that this um you know like Arsenal's got such a huge Jamaican support um from Sparks, the, huh? Sparks, yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, Sparks, yeah, huge, huge, huge Jamaican support, huge, huge Jamaican support, and. You know, we we as I say, we gotta get out. We gotta come down, man. We gotta come down, definitely. Yeah, and all the vloggers in Jamaica want to take on that team that you have, that AFTV team. You know, anytime you come to Jamaica, them come down here playing a six aside against you. Yeah, yeah, bad man team that you know, mine, you know. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but will you be in Philadelphia in June? Can't I will be. Yes, I will be in Philadelphia in June. Arsenal going to be doing the. Uh, 
the preseason tour. So I'm going to be yeah, Philadelphia, uh, LA, and I, I think um, there's talk that they're going to add a, a Las Vegas game to it as well. So yeah, I've got a busy summer, man. I've got to go to. Ge I'm going to be over in Germany for the Euros, and then yeah. after that, be going down to um, Philadelphia and Vegas and LA. So that should be great. It should be great. So, and tell Ty that we want him to come to Jamaica with you on the one condition he wears his sweater. He will wear his sweater. I mean, I don't, we we was in we was in Nigeria, and this man, I go, oh, it's so hot here. What, what you? It's hot. It's cold. It's hot. It's cold. Yo, yeah. bro, I'll tell you, man. He's a, you know, I think you you guys have to hook him up with a Jamaican girl and come down there. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that dating. I thought he went did the whole dating thing that you did and it worked out for him, man. <laughs> that, I think he needs a new. He needs a new look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but listen, thank you so so much. This was such oh, thank a, you. A, a good time. Really, really, really appreciate you coming. Out. Words, no worries, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um. And I wish everybody in Jamaica a happy Easter. Have a great Easter. And, um, you know, yeah, we, you know, everybody up in, in the UK, we love Jamaica, man. You know what I mean? And um, me, as I said, I'm, I'm glad that you said what you said earlier that, you know, it, it shines through the, you know, um, the Jamaican heritage because, you know, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the Jamaican heritage. And I cannot wait to get down there, man. So I will be coming this year. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Sure. All right. <laughs> we'll see. That means what Robbie's saying, people. I know if Turkish was here, we'd say, Robbie, stop. You don't want to be clipped. He's really <laughs> saying, clip, he, clip, he, clip, he, clip. All he's saying is that he believes Arsenal is going to win the league. So he, <laughs> he, 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 he said, no, 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 Hold on, wait. I didn't, I didn't say that. I said, that, but I, what I would say is Arsenal have a very, very good chance of winning the league. Right? Don't sleep on this. It's a very, very good side this year. Um, it's a different team as well, and we got a great chance. Yeah, I think you need to be brave though. We are beating City. It's Arsenal two, City one. I know you you predicted. I think your your I, score I, prediction I, was I two two. Yeah, I predicted uh, yeah. the draw. Yeah, well, we're I beating think, listen, City. I hope you're right, bro. Prove me. Right. I hope you're the one that's right. I'm gonna be at the ground. I'll be going up to that ground now. The last time I was there, 2015, when we won. Since that, every time we go there, we get slapped up. We have to go there and do something. Um, so hopefully this is the one. Hopefully oh, this is uh, the one. Planet, 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 planet of the show is saying that Robbie bring Uncle D Dutton. Is is what's that name? Dutton. Uh, bring Uncle with you to Philly. Uncle who? Dutton. Who's that? I don't. Uncle, I don't know who that uncle is. Planet of uh, Uncle Dutton, Dutu. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but, is, that that yeah. guy, uh, is that the the guy on TikTok who does the? <laughs> there's, a, there's an Arsenal fan on TikTok with his son. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Oh, um, oh, yeah. I know. I think I know who you're talking. Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant. He's a yardie, right? He's a yeah, yardie. We're, we're, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get him on the um onto one of our shows soon. He's oh, he's saying Adibayo. He's Adibayo. Rice and peas. That rice and peas guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really <laughs> funny, really funny. Yes, yeah. all right, awesome, awesome. So good having you. Listen, Dutton Adibayo, BBC Radio. Oh, Dutton Adibayo. Adibayo. Oh, yeah, okay. B I think yeah, he's, yeah. he's 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 um, I think he's he's Nigerian or Ghanaian. I think. Yeah. I think, I think he's um. I think he may be married to a Jamaican, if I remember right. Maybe, yeah. But yeah. listen, ML Smith Row, Reese, I mean, there are so many players who have Ars um, connections with Jamaica at Arsenal, even in their mm. academy setup. You know, I hope some of them, um, yeah. yeah, would would like you said. And and again, like like you rightly said, like we have to be organized because be, these people are coming from a high quality environment mm -hmm. while while we we don't have all the resources of england we have to be professional and organized so that when they come here while they understand that we're limited but we still provide the, mm -hmm. the best environment for them you understand me um they should be able to fly in comfort and stay in comfortable hotels and, and stuff like that have quality surfaces to play on um, so that when they go back to their clubs, they're not injured. So there's a whole lot of things that it is involved. And I'm glad that you shed that light on it because I know that many of the players in the diaspora, they get a hard time because people feel like they are 
rejecting Jamaica to, to, for England that is rejecting them. And, and like I said, it's not that easy. It's a tough decision, mm. even Very for tough. a parent. And you are one of those parents mm. that it, it, it is not an easy decision. And you love Jamaica. Imagine those who don't have the kind of connection like you, how difficult it would be for them. So, yeah, so very grateful tough. that you share those insights. Yeah, no worries. No worries. And thank you. Once again, thank you very much. Respect, respect, yeah. Abby. So, All people, right. listen, you know, we don't have to tell you about AFTV, right? You know how to find it. If, if you don't know how to find it, you should not be on this channel. So, make sure that. I mean, we don't have a lot of subscribers to give to Robbie, but you can go over there and subscribe to AFTV. <laughs> and That's next me. time you come and say, hey, I saw you and I am sure sports. So you know why they call me that, Robbie? Because I am sure that this year, Arsenal will win the Premier League. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> all right. Thank you so, so much. Good have a party. wonderful, wonderful thank rest you, of the night. And all the best to you Good and AFTV. Party. Bless man, bless. All right. All right. So there you go, people. Um, they call him Don Robbie. The man was here in person with us. Um, yeah, good, good talk, right? Yeah, man. Good, good, good conversation. Good yeah. yeah. I appreciate some light. I'm glad he shed some light on the players, you know, trying who is eligible to play with Jamaican heritage. You know, for someone that's in England and be, being around these club and traveling to the different stadiums, I mean. With his experience and expertise, he shed some light on both the marketing aspect and getting persons in the stadium. And, you know, the, from a player perspective in making a decision to choose whether England or Jamaica. So it's a lot of things to factor in. Yeah, very. I think, like I said, it's such an important discussion to have so you could actually hear the perspective from there. Because, and I think a lot of Jamaicans need to listen to this because they think. Because you call and say, hey, you have Jamaican heritage. A player just is going to, a player going to jump. He has an agent, he has advisors, and there are financial implications to the decision. And that don't mean he hates Jamaica, but he has a right to, to secure his, his future and make a decision that he believes is in the best interest of himself and his family. And I think more Jamaicans need to listen to this. Don't believe it's an easy decision i remember i said to people there are some people in jamaica right now who are footballers if america gave them the option they are born in jamaica they're mm -hmm. playing schoolboy football in jamaica and if america presented them with the option right now to play for america they give up their jamaican citizenship mm -hmm. right away to represent the united states of america so don't be so hard on people it's right? a process it's a process and you know, some of sometimes these decisions take can take a couple of years. You understand? These decisions can take a couple of years. A lot of planning behind it. Yeah. And I know some persons wanted to call in. I, I, I didn't want to accept any call just because of how the program was going, because we had limited time and we went over the time and other persons wanted to join the stream. Right. So so here's the truth. We at the end of the season, we're going to try to have him back. And we, we, we have a couple other personalities that we're going to have on. And then we'll ask him from before if they will accept calls because I didn't do that. And I didn't want to just accept calls without letting the guests know. Right. So I will ask that before I get them on. But thank you so, so much, um, Kimo, because I know we have been working on this for quite a while. It finally came through. Um, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to, there is going to be, trust me, the watch party in Jamaica. And maybe we will have to call upon some of you to be a part of that to help us. All right. Um, but thanks to every single person who tuned in. For those who will watch it and on the rewatch, I want to thank you. Again, hit the like button, subscribe and share. I am sure sports. We have many other persons who are in vlogging here, right? I see um, Simon Preston at Reggae Boys Commentary, Jason Guna um, from Jason Guna TV, um, 433 Press, Presser, D, D Press is here as well. Um, so, so support the channels, like let Black Industries support Black Industries. It doesn't hurt to support a next person's work right um to subscribe so so let's show some love right um and, and just support each other's industry so we can grow wealth 
uh, as and, and leave wealth for the next generation. Let us help to build our our wealth portfolio by 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 just liking, subscribing to an next person channel. Let their numbers grow and leave it at that. Even if you don't watch it regularly, but subscribe and support. All right. Respect again. Thank you so, so much to every single one of you, to the members, the moderators, the persons who just liked the video and didn't watch the video. Those who didn't make a comment, those who gave super stickers, super chats, whatever it is. It is Super Friday. It has been a super fantastic day and this Good Friday. That's Kimo over there. All right. Doing a lot of work. Right. Um, watch along for Sunday. <laughs> your mommy <mad, yeah. laughs> uh fun of the show uh you know that uh maybe cranky you know me, me not like to watch along when my team are playing you know? me have to hold a steady medic <laughs> i have to do a steady medic when my team playing but i can tell you that when arsenal win i'll be doing a show after that because liverpool and brighton are going draw and I'll be a happy man. <laughs> but I am management. This has been I am sure sports as usual. When it gets to the end of the show, we say we are over and we are O-U-T out of here. Hey, Archer Bad Dog, SK New Artist. The body you there, Sniper King, I represent for I am sure sports. You get to me, I say, when you want the latest news and sports and updates and all of that, check out I am sure sports. You know the thing was in. Remember, you cover the whole island. Member Kingston, Westmoreland, Galchester, Ocherius, Galtigo Bay, everywhere. I am sure sports check it out for the latest news and latest updates. Sniper King are represent. Where them feel like? Ha, yeah. Someone on for the food from young from with their knee height. I am sure sports. Yeah, dog.